Liars Luncheon. So EDC, you mean to tell me he was so insulted by the fans' backlash and the fans' criticism of the current crop of wide receivers. He was so insulted and said the receivers should be so insulted by that that he not only takes Rashad Bateman in the first round, but he double dips and takes Tylen Wallace too. YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. Woo! And this is a pick right here. This is a pick right here. Tylen Wallace is six feet tall. But when I watch him play, uh, he's not the fastest, he's not the tallest, but he's explosive, and he goes up and gets it. He goes up and gets it. He's very good at making concentrated catches and contested catches as well. And I think my two favorite words to describe him when I watch film on this guy is deceptive physicality. Deceptive physicality. Because I think, and he sort of, to me, he's built like, a, he built like Devin DuVernay a little bit. Not, not as muscular, not as swole as a Devin DuVernay, but sort of that low to the ground physical guy, but playing wide receiver. And this, they, this, this is, woo, this is big. This is a lot bigger than some of y'all may realize, man. This is a lot bigger than some of y'all may realize because this pick, this pick right here, and this was what, a fourth round pick, I believe? This pick right here, this puts pressure on everybody that much more. That much more. EDC is, the wide receiver group is going to look a lot different this year than it did last year. It's going to look a lot different. Hollywood is a lock to be there. He's, he ain't going nowhere. Sammy Watkins is a lock to be there. He ain't going nowhere. Devin DuVernay is a lock to be there. He ain't going nowhere. But then I, 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 I wonder and I worry, um, and this obviously ain't nothing personal because y'all know I'm rooting for him like crazy. Like crazy. Y'all already know what time it is with Miles Boykin. Love Miles Boykin. And I, want, I really want this dude to do well, man. But you got to feel like this, is, this puts pressure on it. Oh, and Rashad Bateman, obviously a lock too. But this, this could be pressure, man. And you know with, uh, with Eric DaCosta, what we've seen, a pattern with Eric DaCosta, and it's, it's different from Ozzie Newsom, and it's not a shot at Ozzie Newsom. But with Ozzie Newsom, he tended to hold on to players too long when it came to loyalty. And, and, and he treated the business, not that this is a bad thing necessarily, but in business it's tough not to do it. But sometimes he would hold on to guys too long. But we've seen under Eric DaCosta, he will get rid of somebody. He, he takes care of business earlier rather than later. Whether that's getting rid of somebody, whether that's giving somebody a contract extension, whatever it may be, on both sides of the business, keeping or letting go. Eric DaCosta, he takes care of stuff early rather than later. This pick, it scares me. It, 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 it scares me, not because I'm afraid that Tylen Wallace would do bad. No, Tylen Wallace, he'll be just fine. But it scares me for other people. Namely, Miles Boykin and James Prochet. Now, with Benjamin Victor and also Deion Kane, those guys are on the team too, but they, they signed to future reserve deals. So I don't expect them to be on the active roster. You never know what could happen, but I don't expect it. But, hey, it's more competition. It's more competition. But this pick is more so, again, from, in my opinion, I think it really puts Miles Boykin and James Prochet on the hot seat. Because you, you, you look... And, and this is nothing coming from a fan, but you look at the usage of the wide receivers. Look at it. Look how much Miles Boykin, and we know Miles Boykin, he may be the best blocking wide receiver on the team. But you look at the usage of a Miles Boykin in the offense, and he was used a limited amount, man. And this was, this was on Lamar. It's on Lamar, because Lamar had a, a lot of opportunities where he missed him and just straight up didn't throw to him. It's also on Boykin, too. Uh, to make the most of whatever opportunity he did get. And sometimes he did, man. Um, there were a few opportunities. So anything that Miles Boykin did, it got blown up, whether it was good or bad, because, of, because he had so few opportunities. Um, and then you look at the usage of Prochet, too. He, had, he was a fifth-round pick last year, I believe. 
Uh, and he had one catch and I think two passes thrown his way. One of them ended up being an interception. The pick six, I think, in a Steelers game, I believe. But anyway, um, with Proche, he was not used on offense. And then he was the punt returner. He was the punt returner. But then, boom, numbers game kicked in. He was on the inactive list for the remainder of the season, toward the end of the year. And they gave that to Devin Duvernay. And Devin Duvernay, he did, he did a good job there. He looked comfortable there, too. So this is why I say with Devin Duvernay, he's, he's straight. He ain't got nothing to worry about. Again, Sammy Watkins, Hollywood, Devin Duvernay, Rashad Bateman, those guys are locks. And, and uh, Tylen Wallace being uh, the fourth-round pick, you got to feel like that's a lock too, especially since he's a fourth-round pick this year. But I am very just, again, I'm, I'm worried the most for Miles Boykin and Prochet, man. And, of course, there's the practice squad and whatnot, but I just, this, this pick sends, oof. It's wow. It's wow. Now, one thing, I know John Harbaugh said that he didn't want to do it. But one thing that they could possibly do with Miles Boykin to, one, try to maximize uh, his potential. And not saying that he doesn't have potential as a wide receiver, because I certainly think that he does. But the system that he got drafted into, it just, it, it, it just wasn't the best of fits. Uh, to really excel and, and really show off the best of the best at the wide receiver position that you got. But with Miles Boykin, one thing that they could do, John Harbaugh has spoken against it, but he's changed his mind on stuff before. They could take that Darren Waller approach with Miles Boykin. He's a big guy, and I know he would have to put on some pounds, because, and, and what I'm talking about is moving him to the tight end position, if they did that. Now, it would be different now, but I, I think it could be done. And again, John Harbaugh said, no, no, he's a wide receiver, and he is that. But you think about some of the things that they like the most about him. Now, it is much different. You go from blocking cornerbacks and safeties and all that to blocking outside linebackers and defensive ends. Yeah, that's a big difference. But you just never know. But I do like this pick. It shows, again, whatever Eric DaCosta, whatever he drafts in the first round, Oh, you best believe he's a, he is going to double down on that. Hollywood, Eric DeCosta first draft, Hollywood in the first round, Miles Boykin in the third. Second draft, uh, Patrick Queen in the first round, uh, Malik Harrison in the third. And now his third draft, Rashad Bateman in the first, and of course, Odafe in the first as well. But then Tylen Wallace in the fourth. So, oof, man, this is, uh, wow. This, um, it's a pressure move, man. It's a pressure move. But again, competition, it breathes excellence, man. It breathes excellence. So whatever receivers make this Ravens roster this year, it is going to be what they feel are the best of the best in the room. Also, another thing to think about, there could be possible trades made as well. The receiver room is, is very crowded. It's very crowded. So trades could be made. Guys could be shipped out for draft picks in the future. Because we know this draft is getting ready to come to an end in a little bit. But people could be shipped out for draft picks uh, from next year's draft. So we'll just see how it goes, man. Ooh, this, uh, ooh, this worries me, man. It, it, it really does, man. But we're going to see how everything works itself out. Team Keep It Clean, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And here we go. We out, man.